Hello everyone. Hello. Can you hear me? Hello from oh, hello Bulgaria. Very good. You're the first one. Buonasera. Hello Lisbon. Hello Lee and Welsh. Can you hear me properly? Um, if let me know if there's any um, issues with the, the, the sound or the, the image. Hello, Kelvin. How are you? Good to see you. Good. Qatar. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Barbara. Hello, Mexico, what? Toledo, Scotland, hello, everyone. Good, loud and clear, very good. Let me know, Kelvin, because you, I know you and uh, you are very aware of how this works. Let me know if, if any, any along the way, if there's any issue with the technology, let me know. I can. Hello from France. France, Sri Lanka, South Africa, Germany. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Pol Poland, Polska, Polska. I don't know if I am pronouncing the the name properly. Okay, so here we are. Um, Christmas is not long from now, not far away from now, so um, I thought that it's, you know, it's a nice time, uh, it's a nice time of the year to catch up with your figurines and um, I, we thought alongside with Squires to create something that you can um, follow in the book, my second book, Animation in Sugar. There's one particular figurine, the toy soldier. This, this is the template that I have here. Um, usually print the template at a hundred uh, actual size, a hundred percent. And I am going to use this template, the toy soldier, as reference to create this new figurine based on this one. Um, I will make a few changes to the shapes, uh, tweak it a little bit, so I get a new figurine. Um, basically, you need to color. Um, I'm using Esquire's SSP, the sugar flower paste. You can go have a go with this one here, uh, or you can use any other paste available that you have uh, close to where you live. Each country has a different uh, different brands, and but in, for this figurine, I am going to use this one on its own, or you can mix it with. Um, equal amounts of SFP plus fondant if you want to soften the paste a little bit. But my suggestion would be to use it as it comes from the package because the paste will dry and then will ensure a nice and sturdy finish. I have colored the paste with a skin tone my skin tone is uh, ivory plus a touch of a tiny tiny touch of orange to um, get rid of the yellowish um, color of the ivory if you are using ivory on its own. Um, then I have red and pink or a light fuchsia or light pink. Um, then you need a polystyrene ball shape. 
a polystyrene ball shape for the head because the head is quite big. So, um, yes, of course, I, I can read your comments on, so you can watch this later. If you are not able to follow the, the whole figurine now, you can watch it at a, at a later time, uh, any time, because it will be at Squires, and then I will share this figurine on my page as well. So, um, this is the polystyrene ball shape that I'm going to use as an internal support for the head because the head, like I said, is quite big. So to keep a lightweight head, I am going to use a polystyrene. If you want to make it edible, um, you can replace the polystyrene with um, Rice Krispies uh, and marshmall marshmallow uh, mix. Hola lluvia, ¿cómo te va? Encantado de tenerte acá. Um, so, let's, without any further ado, let's get started with the main pieces for the figurine, which are the legs, the torso and the head. Let's start with the head because this is the lighter color, the skin tone, before I stain my hands with red or black or any other deep color. This is a polystyrene shape number four, which means that it's four centimeter diameter. Take 35, no, sorry, 25 grams, um, 25 grams of skin tone modeling paste to cover the whole surface of the polystyrene shape. This is 25 grams. Roll it into before you start working with the paste, I usually stretch and fold, stretch and fold, stretch and fold, so the paste becomes really pliable and nice to work with. The aim of this figurine for me is to go back to the very beginning of modeling, basic shape. Um, there's a trend lately to um, you know, to uh, make complex figurines, uh, human-like figurines and uh, hyper-realistic, but I find that quite tricky and difficult to make, um, probably because I don't have that, that um, uh, that's not my strength, actually. So I need to, I need to take everything to my, you know, to my side and make um, make it easy for me and for everyone. So, pay attention to the basic shapes. It's all about getting the right shape. Now it's going, now I need a, a ball shape. So, roll the base between the palm of your hands, like this, and to remove all the creases on the surface, like this. Then, flatten, the shape with the heel of your hand. Then <clears throat> I am going to apply a bit of piping gel or edible glue on top of the surface. This is my piping gel here. Just with my finger, I'm going to apply a thin layer of the piping gel or um, edible glue. Take your polystyrene ball shape, push the polystyrene and roll it at the same time like this, so you get like a, um, a Chinese hat, kind of. Then, then you hold it like this and then you push the paste all the way up to cover the whole surface of the polystyrene ball shape. Just gently keep 
pushing the face and I will apply a thin layer of edible glue here or piping gel. I prefer piping gel because it's sticky, it's tacky, so rotten. I suggest to use piping gel in this particular case. So, push the paste. So this is the way I cover my polystyrene ball shapes. And then roll the paste again between the palms of the hands. Try to take all the, to seal or join, to bring all the paste to one point here and close it. If you have a crease here, do not worry too much because then we can hide it with hair or a hat or something or the neck. Then roll it again to um, get a smooth surface. Yes, Lorraine, uh, you will be able to watch this back at a later date. So, or, so then you can, you know, watch, pause, get the head, pause, get the legs, pause, and then so on. The, the aim of the class uh, is to show all the basic shapes that you have to work on to build up this figure. Let me remove a flap here because today is kind of... There we go. Okay. So this is the head. Remember to leave the joint, the crack, the crease, this crease here, that one there, just down. Put it down like that. Let me fix the camera because I think it's jumping a little bit. So, this is the head, and let the head firm up for a little while before we continue with the facial details. Now I'm going to work on the legs, for the legs of the figurine. The original size, this is the original size, and this is the new shape that I created. I elongated the rectangular shape and then taper the shape towards the, the bottom. So this is the new shape that I am going to follow. And I elongate it, make it uh, taller. And for the torso the same. I made the shoulder line broader here on top and bring it down here and elongate the waist here. Just so it will be longer. The size would be, if you want to, the height with eight centimeters for the legs and three and a half, roughly, nearly four for the length of the torso. For the legs, um, I am going to start with 50 grams of pink modeling paste. And for the torso, I am going to start with 50 grams of red for the torso and 50 for the legs. And again, stretch and fold, stretch and fold. So the face becomes really pliable. Then roll the face. Once the face is pliable, roll the face into a ball shape. And again, to remove all the creases of the surface. Put it down and then I need to roll it 
into a um, into a long teardrop. This. So this you always start with um, a ball shape, and then I need to elongate the shape into a long teardrop. So, this is my ball shape, and then I'm going to create a long cone shape. I'm working with SFP, this one here, Jacqueline, this one here, flower paste. It's all flower paste on its own. I didn't mix in any fondant because I need to get a sturdy finish. So, create a long cone shape for the legs, then take your smoothers and press the sides, the top to flatten the shape, the sides again and the top sides again on the top to create a sharp edge here to create the edge here and there and keep going until you're happy with the the shape the, the edge is here and um, here. There we go. Now I'm going to place this shape on my template and match and fit with the drawing here so that the shape, um, you know, this the shape fit on my template. Uh, this is gum paste or flower paste. It is say kind of the same thing. It's different formulas, but you can either go for flower paste or gum paste or modeling paste or any or fondant plus CMC. There's so many different ways of um, creating your own modeling paste. I will trim the bottom and the top of the legs here then so these are my legs now i'm going to create a separation of the legs with the back side of the uh, blade careful not to cut yourself here so push this down the middle to create a separation of the legs on both sides legs are ready and let them firm up for a little while like that. so i've got the head the legs and now i need to work on the torso of the figurine roll 50 grams of red modeling paste um well, um, 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 if you follow the full tutorial, you, you can, um, you know the, all the equipment and the amount of paste that I'm using for each part of the, of the figurine. So it's very easy. The materials and equipment is very, very, um, you don't need many, many things to create this figurine. What is the blade called? This is a blade that I, I'm using, you know, the, from the Stanley knife. Uh, this one. So I remove it from here and I use it like this on its own. But try careful not to cut yourself with this one, okay? You can use uh, a knife, 
a plain a knife if you feel more uh, if you feel more comfortable you can use this one instead of this one it's up to you feel free to use whatever you feel uh, comfortable with Buenas tardes, Rosa Laura Sánchez Castro. ¿Cómo le va? Muy bien. So, going back to this one. Let's say that there's a lot of humidity where you live and, um, and you need the piece to dry really, really quickly. That's when I add or incorporate CNC into my modeling paste or flower paste or fondant or whatever you're using. I recommend using CNC from Squires because it's really fine and very, uh, it mixes in with in the paste very nicely. So look at the amount. It's a generous pinch of CMC into my modeling paste, into, in this case, it's my flower paste. And mix your CMC until it's fully blended into your paste. Why am I doing this? Because I want this torso to dry quicker, quickly. So, knead the paste with your CNC until it's, um, there's no traces of CNC in your flower paste. So now roll the paste into a ball shape again. I always start with the ball shape first. And look at the shape. This is like a sausage slightly tapered to the shoulder line here. So roll the paste into a sausage. Now the thickness here should be of the same that you see on the template here, like that. So taper the, the taper the cylinder or the sausage this shape towards one end and look at my hands like i said before these are all basic shapes and this is the aim of the class to um, start by um, getting used to uh, the basic shapes. With basic shapes you can create so many different and beautiful figurines. There's no need to go for a complex figurine. Um, when you are running out of time or when you, you know, I usually want to get my figurines done in, in a few days. I don't want to spend that much time on, on them. So, this is the shape. Now I am going to flatten the top gently here and bring this down here. It's like a slope. Always try to work on the template on the template so you can follow the outline easily using the smoothers or your hands or your fingers whatever you need to use to achieve the same shape that you see on the template templates are so important because we get the same um, um, the size that we need for each part of the body. Let me get some water. Any questions so far?
Thank you to everyone who is connected to this Facebook Live. And I hope you make the most of it. And most importantly, you have a go with this figurine. And um, you can start creating your own figurines at home with your kids, nephew, nieces, with whoever is around you. Um, for this Christmas, this is a perfect opportunity to create these figurines. Now, I usually let this firm up for a little while. If you have it, for a, leave it for a few minutes like this, and then I will explain why. Because I, I need to cut here. If I cut it now, I won't get a, like a sharp cut. It will be, it will, it, I won't get a clean cut. So let it firm up for a little while. So this is, these are my legs, this is the torso, and this is the head. Look at this. All done. Uh, yes, we can, I, hopefully we can um, upload the template, but um, let me speak with quiet because I don't know how this work, because the templates are included in the book. So, yeah, it's not a problem, but let me, let me work it out. And then you can find the templates uh, for you to download somewhere. Um, so let me do it now. So now it should be fine because I put a lot of CMC here. So I'm going to trim the base here with the sharp blade. So, you see, you get a clean cut and neat and on top. And this is still too long. I need to keep trimming the paste. Good. There we, are. there we go. Now again, I need to create a line down the middle from the top to the bottom of the top here. Now it's time to see if both components work nicely together. This part is slightly higher than the legs. Look at that. The torso should be higher. Hola Miguel Ángel. Encantado de que estés aquí también, todos. Thank you everyone who is watching my uh, online tutorial. Um, now it's time to create, uh, to insert an internal support. Let me, before we insert the skewer, the internal support, I let these pieces dry for a few minutes. Now let's go back to the head. I have one head ready here. This is, I done this one a few hours ago, so now the face is firm, firmer than this one. I will let this one firm up. If you let the paste firm up for a little while, it's so easy to work with. So someone is asking, uh, I think it's um, Bashini or Bahini, so, uh, why do I add CMC only to the torso and not, why not to the trousers? <laughs> because I simply forgot to put my CMC into this one, but you can add CMC into the legs and into the torso. Yeah, I set up the difference. You can add CMC on both, but I completely forgot to put on this one. Uh, which means that the legs will take longer to dry and these will dry quicker. And then, therefore, we need to wait a little bit more. Now, let's go for the head. For the head, uh, I am going to um, look at this. There's a middle line across the face. The eyes should be uh, 
just above the middle line across the face. Just above the middle line across the face. And I am going to create the, uh, I'm going to blush the cheeks first because the cheeks are below that middle line. So I will take the cheeks as reference to uh, understand where the rest of the facial details fall on this face. So these are the cheeks. How am I going to create the cheeks? First, you need to roll a piece of modeling paste, roll it quite thin, paper thin, then cut a circle in the middle, and this will be your stencil to create the, the cheeks. Seguramente Miguel Ángel me va a echar la bronca porque no estoy hablando en inglés, pero para crear las... Eh, las eh, los cachetitos para darle color en este caso hice un stencil, creé un stencil con un pedacito de masa corto el centro con un circulito y lo voy a utilizar para, para eh, dibujar los, las mejillas sobre esta cabeza so, um, um, ok, another question how long are the legs? the legs are eight centimeter long and the torso is nearly four centimeters long eight and four eight centimeters long and four centimeters long and this is a polystyrene ball shape number four four centimeter diameter here I have my um, pale peach dust to color mix with pink. These are squares. I love these dust food colors because they are very nice to work with. Take a soft brush. Remove the excess of your brush here. Take the head place the template, the stencil of the... remember this is a... I need to... there's a middle line across the face and I need to put it... blush the cheeks below that middle line across the face. There we go. one of the cheeks. I'm going for the second one. So leave a gap in between and apply the dust food color. Sí, sí, hablo español también. Pasa que tengo alumnos que se conectan de todas partes y a veces me piden que les explique cómo es eh, la técnica. Hoy elijo inglés porque si voy, tengo que pasar de un idioma al otro, me termino con la cabeza fundida, pero no importa. <risa> Ahora, vamos a, a rectificar un poquito el color acá. I'm going to um, define, adjust the color on this one. Again. So you can retouch the color as many times as you like. I have my the cheeks ready. Now it's time to work on the nose. For the nose, you need to color a tiny piece of skin tone or white modeling paste, a light pink color. Roll it into a sausage and then you flatten the shape um, and let it firm up. This is still soft, but it's firm enough for me to cut out the nose shape. And again, I'm going to use a glaze. Um, let's go for an easy... Let's go for a... Oh, sorry, you can't see there. 
we chop this like this the top and the base it's a rectangular a rectangle shape I'm going to glue the nose right in the middle in between the And I'm going to glue the nose with water. Give me water. Apply water on one side. Remove the excess. And glue it down the middle. There. And push. Try not to lose the shape. This is why I let the base firm up for a little while. Because when I push the base, it doesn't lose the shape easily. Now I'm going to create the... Uh, for the eyes, uh, I'm going to... Uh, draw using a black food color pen. I am going to uh, um, draw the eyes here. Just two curves. One. Let's go for. Let me check the shape. Um, <laughs> close to your nose. Here. One. and to draw the other side I need to flip the head I need to flip it upside down so I can um, get a nice shape on when I need to draw the left eye the eye on the left there we go Now I'm going to create the moustache. For the moustache, uh, I will take some black modeling paste. He's going to have a big moustache. Fold it into a sausage and then take a piece of black modeling paste, cut in half so you get two pieces of the same size. And then roll it into a ball shape and into a teardrop. Board shape. Hello Olga from Austria. I wish I could understand the message, but unfortunately I can't read. Um, there is any way that you can translate the message. Hola Graciela desde Costa Rica. Bienvenida. So now you can leave it like this and then you can glue them here. Or you can create like a, a sharp edge here. If you put your, your finger, your thumb and index finger like this, and then you run your two fingers over the surface of the base like this, and then you will create a ridge here that is very nice for the mustache. So I will push like pinching the base, pinch and I am creating a ridge on top of the shape and at the same time I am elongating, can you see that edge there? There. 
I usually take my time to create the facial details because this is the focal point for me. Uh, so you can actually see me working at my own pace. And then you can curl the end up. Ready? So one is ready. One finish. I need to go for the second one. So I will create a ridge on top here. So please put your hands like this, thumb and index finger together, keep them like this and then you run the fingers on top of the base until you shape it and then you get a ridge on top. It's very, very nice to create sharp edges on the paste. Can you, that's it. And then I am going to curl the end on, from the opposite end and curl the paste. Curl the mustache like that. So the, the two pieces are ready to glue just below the nose. With water. Hello, Helen. Nice to see you. For all the, uh, my students and for all the people who follow me on my social media and through Squire's page right now, um, I, all, I have uploaded um, a new online class that is ready to watch and I will on my Facebook, um, it's all about facial expressions. I'm going to glue the moustache just below the nose and try to curl the shape a little bit here. Maria Laura Cristiano, hola. Uh, República Dominicana, bienvenida, un placer, un placer que todos estén aquí conectados hoy, ¿eh? Ahí. traten de no perder el, el filo que crearon en la puntita acá, arriba de los bigotes, ahí está, tómense su tiempo para poder crear esta carita, so take your time until you're happy with the shape. Uh, I hope you can appreciate the ridge there because it's really, really nice. This one, these ridges here. Small details. Now, um, the head is ready. I am going to um, skewer. Here. Take a long skewer and now it's time to push the skewer from the bottom of the legs and then you twist, twist and push. Twist gently. Gently. No, don't rush. This is the part that most of my students are so afraid of. Um, but it, I understand that we don't want to mess it up so until you go all the way through like that it's not a big problem if you don't hit the center if it's a slightly off center it's fine just let it let it be you see that it's a slightly crooked but it's okay we can fix that later and again, I'm going to use the same skewer and I usually start from the thinner end and push the skewer down the middle, down the center, all the way through the torso, here. There we go, now we created this and again I'm going to push 
create a hole here, there. Hold it like this. This is why I let the head dry first, because when I push here, if it's if the base is still soft, um, you will squash it and then you will lose the shape. You will lose the nice geometric shape. Christine, how are you, Christine? Um, I was on the phone with Janet today, so your friend. So anyway, so push. Careful not to go all the way through, but if you go all the way through, it doesn't matter because he's going to have a hat on top of the head. So, so I have created a socket here to insert the hair later on. So now it's all ready. Um, if you can let these pieces dry for at least uh, one day, or as long as you can, one or two days before you start assembling the figurine. Because it's always nicer. If you can you play safe if you let all the pieces dry. Now um, I have different colors. I already rolled different colors here. I got this is like a bluegrass color. Um, this this is the same as this one with black. It's bluegrass and black color, and this is cyclamen color. I'm going to use this one. This is the bluegrass with black. I am going to cut out a long strip. wrap around the to create the belt let me remove these colors today I'm not rushing the process because I want to enjoy it I don't want to um, feel the pressure of finishing the whole figurine Sometimes it's nice to um, sit down, relax a little bit, and enjoy the process. Then glue it from the front, and then take it to the back here. And I'm going to bring the I will bring the two ends onto one side so I can hide it in a way. And then remove the excess with the scissors here. There we go. If there's an, a tiny, the joint there is not neat and clean it doesn't matter then we can put something there to cover it up but it doesn't look really bad it's okay for to me now i'm going to glue um, i'm going to cut a circle with a round cutter for the buckle here It's all about basic shapes and it's all about the color that you're using for the project. So this is bluegrass with a touch of black, this is cyclamen and this is red. And then I need a, a circle, this one here, I will glue it here as for the neck. This is a flat ball shape. You make a ball shape and then um, flatten the shape and then you glue it on top of the uh,
fabulous Leslie. I hope you make the most of my two books. Um, you will find the template of the Toy Soldier. And I'm using that template to create this figurine. I'm using the same template. The only difference is that I that I shape it. I change the basic shapes. As you can see, let me show you again. You print the template out of the book of the Toy Soldier. And I have elongated the trousers and the torso and changed the shoulder line, broader here and longer. Four centimeters long and eight centimeters long for the legs. And the legs are tapered here, so I get it like a trapezium shape. So now we have the legs, the torso, and the head. Now it's time to um, work on the arms. For the arms, um, roll red paste into And again, these are, these are basic shapes. Ball shape, roll it into a long sausage, one centimeter width approximately. Like this. Try not to squash the ends because these are the shoulders. So put it next to the torso like this. And then you need to um, work out the length of the arm. One of the arms is going to be straight, this one here. So the only way to work out the length, just put it next to the torso and then you trim the excess and then follow this one again to get the other one, the length of the other one. You can buy my, uh, Paola, you can buy my books um, on Squires, yeah? They have both of my books available, Animation in Sugar 1 and Animation in Sugar Take 2, both. If you want to bend the arm, I will roll the paste here, thin the paste here, just a little bit. Push the handle of a paintbrush, brush water or edible glue here and bend. And then you bring the elbow. I, uh, Monday, I didn't put any CNC into the into the arms because um, because the paste, the, the the flower paste that I'm using is is firm, is firm enough. So I'm happy with the consistency. Um, and I usually add CMC into the main structure, which are the torso and the legs and the head. But for the rest of the details now, there's no need to put any CMC. These are the layers, the layers on top of the main structure. <clears throat> there's no need to put CMC as long as the base that you are using is firm enough. Now I'm going to apply water here and here. Remove the excess with your finger until it becomes tacky to the touch. And then glue onto the side of the torso. And then push a little bit here. Try not to squash the shoulder. It's very common that people just, you press too much here and then you squash the shoulder and then you lose that round area. Try not to lose that roundness there.
And as you can see, it's so easy. It so doesn't take long. It's been nearly an hour and I got all the main pieces ready. Let me remove a tiny flap here. It's horrible when you're working on... So that's very visible. There we go. There we go. All done. So we have the body ready and the legs. Here down in the middle, I am going to glue. I cut out a long triangle out of cyclamen. You cut out uh, this shape from the paste and then you glue it down the middle here. That will create, you know, give a bit of depth and also decorate the legs and define the the shape. Not all the way to the top, just lower. Let me do this one again. See, it's not, the water is not enough, so I'm going to use glue. So I can gel. Any questions so far? There we go. You can um, repeat the same thing on, on the other side. I'm, I'm going to keep this one for now. There we go. And now it's going to stand up the figurine. So this is why I put loads of CNC into the legs and into the torso because I need to stand it up after an hour. So, so here I have uh, a polystyrene shape just to use as support or um, I cut out a circle with bluegrass color is one and a half centimeter thick. Just put it there. It's not, I, it's not fully dry, still soft inside. So, oops, this is not still moving. There we go. And again, let it firm up first. Well, I, I'm going to use this. The, these are the legs that I done before. This is this. Uh, this is from yesterday. You can see the difference. And this is the the, the one that I did right now. Now I'm going to uh, push the skewer into the paste and into the uh, polystyrene gummy. Sorry, I'm covering it a bit. Show you there. Push the skewer into the dummy for now. And now I'm going to. Yes, you will be able to watch the video again at any time. And now I'm going to insert the, the, the torso. Because this is not centered, this one here, I am going to remove, I mean, cut it flush to the legs here, here, and I am going to use another skewer to glue the torso onto the leg. This is another skewer that I'm using, a different one, so. Sorry. 
Leave uh, a piece of skewer protruding from here because the length I need to support the head. So this is the figurine. Let me, let me move this to the camera a little bit so you can see. Yes. Let me fix the camera. So you can see the while I work on the you can see part of the there we go. Because this is important, but I think it's important to see <coughs> the, how I do it. This is the aim of the class. You can see a bit of the mess that I have on my on the side here. I will remove this to tidy up a little bit. Now it's time to push the head onto the skewer protruding here. So, head is ready. This one here. All done. I have the, the head. Um, what I'm going to glue now is the, the hands on the, the arms. For the hands, I'm going to roll two pieces of pin tone into a Here, one. So remember to let things firm up before you keep adding the rest of the detail to the figurine because my figurine is not fully dry but at, at least you can see most of it. These are the hands. Then you can add details, <coughs> the calf, um, <coughs> let me show you here. See? What I did, I also created a hat um, that um, it's a cylinder. Let me fix this camera. There. For the hat, uh, I have a cylinder. It's already firm. And another, this is a, a hemisphere. Uh, then you glue them together. Once they are glued, you can add detail on the hat, and the hat is going to be placed here. Yeah. So how am I going to support the hat here? With a circle. Glue this on top of the head. You have two options. You can chop the head to get a flat top or you can add a circle of paste here. Here. This is the hat. And of course you can finish with the hair, the, the ears, and you can also add a to this. This is a skewer with a star on the here. I'm going to push. Remember to let the hands dry. Oops, first I will create 
it's easier this way. I will push these all the way through. See, move it back. If you let it dry first, it's easier to work with it, to dry this off. But this will help me to keep the and push the skewer into the base. I'm going to remove the excess base showing here at the bottom. So this is real time. So if you if you actually Hola Minerva, a mi familia mexicana, miren que bonito. Ay. So, if you um, um, let this dry properly and then you keep adding more and more details, you can see the whole figurine. It's so easy to, to decorate your cake uh, for this Christmas. And look at the difference when you apply the hat on top of the head like this or if you look at this one I cut the top here to get it flat it's completely different you get more of a the join looks much neater and cleaner so I prefer this one over this one um, and look at this uh, this is my raw model of the figurine so we, on this one I was working and playing with the shapes and look at the look at the cheeks. I placed the cheeks higher than should be. They were on the middle line across the face. So on this one, I tried not to repeat what I did on this one. But anyway, um, I hope you uh, have a go with this figurine for this Christmas. You can change the colors of the figurine, uh, create your own. Um, you can add as many details as you like. Um, look at this. This is a dry piece of paper that I can put around the base. So you can create this di different, you know, height and dimension to the, um, the possibilities are endless here. Okay, so that's it. This is not finished for me, to me. Uh, let me switch the camera. And so you can see my face. Hello, everyone. So this is my figurine. So you can see from a different angle. Um, there we go. So you can see the full figurine on its own standing here. There we go. So using the same template, this is for the, the toy soldier. You can uh, change it a little bit and, you know, create your own figurines. And the star is from the Santa Claus from my first book. This is a leftover that I had. So I'm kind of reusing all the bits and pieces that I have around in the in the studio that I had to set up um, around this time. Um, I hope you enjoy the process. Remember to keep it simple. Don't get too stressed about the shapes. Have a go. Um, make your own experience and let me know how it goes. And if you send me the final figurine to my, to my social media to share with, uh, you know, my followers it would be fantastic. Thank you again to everyone who joined me today um, and see you uh, online in a future class. Any question before I go? Oh, this is what I'm drinking here. Just let me share with you some, you know, this is what I'm drinking. This is a, a typical drink from Argentina. This is called mate. Mate, it's M-A-T-E. Uh, it's like a herbal tea. It's like a green tea that we fill this um, 
this is wood made of wood and this is a metal straw here and we pour some hot water into the this is my hot water there we go some people like it bitter some people like it sweet and then you drink it so cheers Thank you everyone from Mexico, everyone. Thank you so much from everyone in the UK. I hope you're having a good time. Um, stay safe, uh, stay creative because this is the only way to go through <coughs> this, you know, uh, unprecedented time. Uh, I think it's, uh, if, we, if we manage to get things done around this day, it would be fantastic and we can put our head into something different, you know. Gracias Miguel Ángel. Tus tartas también fantásticas como siempre. Super creativo Miguel Ángel. Muchas gracias a todos los que se conectaron desde Sudamérica o desde Canadá. Eh, todos los que hablan español también. Siempre es un placer que me sigan en las redes y a través de otras páginas como hoy hicimos con Squires. Thank you for British Sugar Craft Guild from the Surbiton. Um, Italy, ciao. Buonasera. Muchas gracias, María Isabel. La verdad que eh, esto no es secreto. Esto, uh, some people think that um, I get things done. Uh, um, it takes me a while to put things together. I'm very slow in the creative process because sometimes life can get on in the way and uh, it's difficult to sit down and be creative. Um, and, you know, we all experience so many... A day can be so unpredictable sometimes that uh, I have a plan when I wake up in the morning and as, as you know, as I, as I move on through the day, I, you know, there's so many things that I have to do, uh, but yesterday I kind of sat down, focused on this one, and I hope you like the, the end result. Calispera, Irini. Marian, hello, Marian Holmes. Yes, I hope we come back to the usual traveling and the expos soon. Ok, I'll let you go. Uh, Minerva, gracias Minerva, saludos a toda la familia desde aquí. Thank you Sri Lanka, thank you so much. Thank you Squire, thank you Laura, thank you everyone who made it this possible. Thank you so much and I hope to see you around and, and stay safe. Bye.